Hey guys, this is Tonor, and to hit today we're here to talk about the Unlimited X Men. Sorry, it's uh, <laughs> it's been a very long day, um, a long couple of days actually, because I got the exclusive interview yesterday, and I had to kind of keep that all silent for a while uh, about Gambit. So make sure you check that out because we've got his kit. We're all gonna also got kit uh, details for the other characters and everything. But today we're here to talk about who the additional two characters are. Now they confirmed within the strike time that there's going to be two more characters coming for the Unlimited X-Men next patch. But it's pretty obvious as to who they are, at least in my opinion. So I'd love to hear from you guys what your thoughts are. But our three core characters that we've got at the moment are Gambit, Phantom X, and Dazzler, it looks like. So who else are we going to have? Now, they gave one of them away very, very easily. Uh, at the end, Cerebro. Hey, sugar. For those who don't know, uh, Rogue typically says sugar a lot, especially when she's talking about Gambit and stuff like that. Um, it, it, if it's not Rogue on this team, I think everyone would be very, very surprised because it kind of is a little bit obvious with that hint there, um, kind of directly calling out that, uh, directly calling out Rogue. The other thing is that I want to uh, say a huge thanks to uh, Benny Westside. He brought this to my attention and I thought of it after he kind of mentioned it. It wouldn't surprise me if Rogue steals away charges and then gives those charges over to Gambit because you'll notice within Gambit's kit, that there's actually no way for him to be able to gain charge besides on spawn. Uh, here, gaining charge on spawn, gain two charges on spawn if it if he is in Cosmic Crucible, but he has no ways to gain additional charges later on or anything like that. So it wouldn't surprise me if he do does like have some way to be able to gain additional charges from uh, from Rogue's kit or something like that. The thing is that these uh, milestones here are very reminiscent to me, at least, of the strike passes, where they have a very limited set amount of time at a very limited set amount of uh, character shards that they're going to be giving away over the course of a month and everything like that. You're going to have to take part in multiple milestone events to be able to get them up to 180 Spider-Woman shards. And if we actually have a look at how those are broken down, they sent us through the information here. Um, boom. There's a lot of these Spider-Woman shards up the top here. Um, 30, like you, you don't even get Spider-Woman shards until uh, milestone 24. So to me, at least this is screaming that this is going to be an unlock team for the next uh, strike part, uh, for the next Scourge event. Uh, so A-Force being one of these Scourge event characters. And then the other one, most likely, at least to me, is going to be Young Avengers. Um, and Rogue obviously being that Scourge event character, being the Horseman of Famine there. Now, as for the other member, Obviously, Rogue, we kind of already knew that. It's very obvious with Gambit coming to the game, you have to have Rogue coming along as well. Uh, with uh, Rogue, uh, she just matches the Horseman of Famine so well. The other one, however, leaves a little bit more to kind of, uh, to guess. So we're going to go off of this to start with, and we've got a few different kind of hints here. First one here is Cable, a Cable comic here in the background. For those who don't know, Cable has a fair bit to do with the Summers family and is one of the kind of main Summers, the son of Madeline Pryor, who's just been added into the game, the son of, um, the son of Scott Summers, obviously Cyclops as well. Uh, this comic is obviously one of the more recent ones uh, showing up there. However, they've also pointed out this and said it's about to get way more awkward about this. So there's kind of a couple different characters that could fit this. Uh, however, I'm only going to talk about the one that I think it is, which is Rachel Summers. Now, why do I think it is Rachel Summers? For a start, she was in the Unlimited X-Men comic. She showed up a few times there. She was in this one here alongside uh, Havoc and Cyclops and Emma Frost there. You've also got here, this one here with Rogue here um, and Marvel Girl, aka Rachel Summers there as well. So both within the Unlimited X-Men comics and uh, as you guys know, the team is called the Unlimited X-Men. Man. All right, and then the second part here is when I'm talking to Matt. He, there are been I think, may have given away that Rachel is coming in the future. In the, in the future, so you know, maybe, maybe Rachel. Or... Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot. 
see that? At least to me, at least I'm pretty sure that's like a nervous tick from me saying Rachel and him immediately copying. Yeah, Rachel. Um, I mean, it may be kind of completely out there. I may have been completely wrong or something like that. But at least to me, Rachel's the character that makes the most sense to be on this team. She's an amazing character. She could have some really unique kit as well. Like if we look at her abilities, she's got like, um, not only can she have like the Phoenix Force and stuff, she's got the telepathy and the empathy and stuff, but she can also see like, uh, is it listed on here? Here, chrono skimming and time travel. That just sounds like an amazing ability for a Marvel character to kind of have. She can be like the third most important on this character, most important character on this team. Um, and she's not a character that heaps of people love. I know she's a character that a few people have been looking forward to, but it would be very interesting to see her kind of come to the game and see how she kind of fits into this kind of summer's characters as well as into um the unlimited x-men potentially as either a support character to be able to heal people up or something like that via like the the time travel or something along those lines or just being able to be like this high damage character she could be a different take on the phoenix and stuff She's also had a bit to do with Excalibur, which I believe is what this team was going to be originally called, and then they've changed it to the Unlimited X-Men. However, I think that it'll be very interesting to see how they exactly do this. So, at least to me, uh, until I see evidence otherwise, the last two members are most likely going to be Rogue and Rachel. Rogue being incredibly sure about that one. I'm, I would bet like 99.9% .9 chance that we end up getting rogue as the other character and then Rachel being the other one most likely whoever it is is going to be someone from the Summers clan which means it's either going to be Rachel or Hope most likely um Hope doesn't have as much to do with the, the whole family or anything like that anymore. She's got a fair bit to do with Cable and stuff, which is why, like, maybe because of the Cable comic. However, Rachel's kind of more kind of tied into the family because, you know, she's an actual direct blood relative rather than the child that Cable took to the future to kind of do stuff um, and protect there. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys, who you guys think it is. That's it for today. Have a great day and goodbye.